Hello everybody and in today's video I'm going to be predicting all 10 games of game week 5 in the Premier League including a title race matchup between Manchester City and Arsenal and also I'll be concluding my goal of game week 4 at the end of the video and I'll be going through my game week 4 predictions to see how I did so stay tuned it's a massive game week. Starting off with a London derby, it's at the London Stadium. It's West Ham United versus Chelsea. And well, Chelsea, I think they're looking pretty good. They look like they can definitely finish in a top six position. Christopher and Cuckoo, the strength, the balance to not fall on the floor, to keep the ball for the goal he scored to get through the two Bournemouth players was absolutely extraordinary. Show me the quality even more. Cole Palmer, fantastic player. The winger situation is honestly great because they've got so many options for the wingers. Jaden Sancho now being there. We know how well he performed for Dortmund. They've got such a good attack. But they're facing West Ham. And you know what, West Ham? I was expecting them to do a bit better than four points in four games. I know they have had some hard games, but I thought maybe they could have done better against Fulham. Not Fulham, Fulham, I'm learning. Because they only just about drew it at the end there. Only just about a late minute goal. I think they have missed that like proper number nine striker. But Fukruk could be returning for this game. And I would not be surprised for a draw in this game. I really would not. I'm going to have to go Chelsea. I really think they're an absolute exquisite side. Their attack looks really good. And I think they can win this. I'm going for a common scoreline 2-1 to the wayside. Chelsea come the final whistle. As we move over to the 3pm kickoffs, is that Villa Park. It's Aston Villa versus Wolverhampton Wanderers. Wolves, they were kind of unlucky to not at least get a point against Newcastle United. Because in my opinion, they could have easily had got three points as well. I was on the edge of my seat. I'll get onto Newcastle later on in the video. But it was a very tight game and they played quite well. But they did come away with a loss. And overall, I think they are one of the weaker sides in the Premier League at the moment. I know Aston Villa has to travel away from home to play young boys in the Champions League, which they most probably should win. They're definitely the favourites and I think they would win. Even though having to travel all that way... I still feel like they can get a win. I know they might be tired and all, but they've got super subs, such as Duran. What a goal. Definitely a goal of the game week contester. So stay till the end for that. But Duran, I mean, what a super sub. Three goals, zero starts. What a stat. What a goal. Aston Villa is showing your depth. So I am going to go for the obvious one. A home win, 3-1. To Aston Villa. Moving over to Craven Cottage, it's Fulham versus Newcastle United. And well, Newcastle. In every single game against Southampton, we went down to 10 men and Southampton were all over us. If it wasn't for a great goalkeeper in Nick Pope and a great defence in that game, we would have not won 1-0. Against Bournemouth, we should have lost. Bournemouth did get a disallowed goal, which probably shouldn't have been disallowed. So we scraped the point, we scraped three points. Against Spuds, they were all over us, but classic Spuds bottled the win and we just about managed to get over the line. And then against Wolves, the same thing happened. Although we did seem a bit more in control in the first part of the first half, which looked a bit better, we still had some concerns and Wolves could have easily got three points. So really, out of the four games, Newcastle have not looked convincing and I would not be surprised for a draw or even a Fulham win. And I do know Alexander Isaac did go off and he might not be available for this game. Well, in the second half, Harvey Barnes and Joseph Willett came on and they were amazing in my opinion. They were pushing forward each time they had the ball and actually create something and actually make something happen. And then Harvey Barnes scored an absolute cracking goal. So start Harvey Barnes and we can nick a goal. But I still feel like it'll be low scoring because Fulham hasn't actually scored many goals this season. And with Nick Pope in goal, making great saves like he did in the last game, and throughout the entire season, yeah, I think we could probably get a clean sheet. I'm going for only just about a one the win come the final whistle. As we move over to the St. Mary's, it's Southampton versus Ipswich Town. And well, Southampton, you know what? Give them credit, the first half an hour, Tyler Dibbons, what a player. He made like two really good runs in the first half an hour. One of them fizzled out, but one of them won them a penalty. Penalty. He looks like a great young talent starting for Southampton. And they looked better than Man United in the first half an hour. And then when they had the penalty, for some reason, Diaz didn't take it. But Cameron Archer did. And it didn't go in. 
If Diaz took it, it would probably have went in because he scored like the nine out of his last nine penalties. Because he didn't take that chance, it stopped the momentum from Southampton. And then eventually they went on and lost at 3-0. That's why in the Premier League, you have to take easy chances like penalties. And going against Ipswich, Murek, I told you in my table predictions that I thought he was an absolute quality top 10 Premier League club quality player. And he made some fantastic saves to hold off Brighton to make it 0-0. It wasn't just him, it was a fantastic defensive structure. They looked Premier League quality against Fulham. They, they could have easily won that game against Fulham, but they didn't. They still managed to pick up a point. And you know what? They're staying up. I'm saying it every week. They're going to win this game. They look much, much, much better than Southampton. And they're going to win this 2-0 comfortably to Ipswich Town come the final whistle. We move to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. It's Tottenham Hotspur versus Brentford. And well, Tottenham, you know, the same defensive errors again, this time from set pieces. They're never good at defending set pieces. But Tottenham, they did play well. They, they probably should have scored at least once or twice. Davide stopped them, themselves stopped them because they just couldn't get past the Arsenal defence. Van de Ven, I talk about how shaky the defence is. They've still got the likes of Van de Ven, which can I say, I remember one of the runs. It was Martinelli running through, then Van de Ven out of nowhere came storming back at a million miles per hour and put in a great size sliding challenge block kind of thing and he is so so fast and so crucial for the defense so i'm not saying tottenham's defense is bad it's just for some reason because they're so attacking with Ange monster coglu it means the defenders also like to go high up the pitch every so often because that's how Ange plays and it does leave a lot of gaps at the back and that was the problem especially when it's tiring and near the end of the game that was the problem that happened in the newcastle game and the leicester game that's why they conceded but as far as the Coglu, i think could easily take tottenham to champions league football next year this year i don't think so they've got a lot of work to do but i really do like his style of football but coming into this game it's going to be high scoring i feel like Brentford, with the likes of Mbwebu up there, is going to score goals. And they look world-class at some points. I'm going to go for five-goal thriller, but towards to the home advantage of Tottenham Hotspur. They still look good. They make some fantastic play. And I'm going 3-2 come the final whistle towards Tottenham Hotspur. Moving over to the King Power Stadium. It's Leicester City versus Everton. Leicester, congrats to you. No points deduction. You managed to get yourself a point at Selhurst Park. Fantastic. Yes, they did bottle a 2-0 lead. Jamie Vardy still looks sharp and he's like 100 years old. Wilfred Ndidi looks fantastic in the last game. What a great ball over to Jamie Vardy. Mavidi getting himself a goal and he's had a great season so far. Leicester seem pretty good. And the home here, I won't pit past a Leicester win. But Everton cannot go a five games in a row with a loss. The same pattern happened. 2-0 up, 3-2 loss. 2-0 up, 3-2 loss. It's crazy how they bottle a 2-0 win. But Calvin Lewin looks good. They've got a striker which can score goals and looks very good. But it's the same defensive issues. And you know what? Leicester, they're home. They're looking good. They've got more points than Everton. They've got no points deduction. They're going to be happy because of that. I'm not going to go for them to lose. But Everton, they've still got a good enough side and they've showed good enough signs. And this is probably one of the easier opponents they're going to be coming across in the Premier League. So because of that, I think they can get a point considering they were close against Bournemouth. There's a lot of positive signs and it's leading up to finally a point. And I think I'm going to go down the middle with a common 1-1 scoreline come the final whistle. As we move over to Anfield, it is Liverpool versus Bournemouth. And well, 1-0 against Nottingham Forest. We have to give credit to the fullbacks at Nottingham Forest. But talking more on Liverpool... Mohamed Salah was absolutely silenced by the fullbacks. It's not like they didn't have opportunities to score. Diaz early on hit the post. McAllister, that was a great ball into Jota. Went straight at the keeper though. They are playing AC Milan, which is going to be a very hard game. And they also have to travel all the way to the San Siro before they play this game. So they're going to be tired still. And Bournemouth are a very good side and created a lot of chances against Chelsea. But coming to this game, I think it was just a one-off playing against Nottingham Forest. I can't see Liverpool doing the same thing. The fact that Arnie Slot has got them playing some fantastic football. And I'm going to have to go for a Liverpool win. I'm going to go for a classic, at least this season, a classic 2-0 win towards Liverpool come the final whistle. We move over to Selhurst Park. It's Crystal Palace versus Manchester United. And Crystal Palace, they haven't started off as they ended off last season. But they have got a couple of draws in the last two games. So they are improving in terms of results yet to get a win. 
maybe it's time to get a win. Or maybe Manchester United have finally started to performing after they won at 3-0 against Southampton and Marcus Rashford scored and had a good game. But it's against, sorry Southampton, it's against one of the worst sides in the Premier League. Yeah, then they didn't face the best of teams and they managed to win it, which is good. But going against Crystal Palace, it's going to be harder. I mean, they bounced back against Leicester City. They were 2-0 down, but they still had enough fight to get back at it and get a couple of goals. Mateta on scoring form again, obviously scored the penalty and an actual open play goal as well. And if he started to score, bring a bit of confidence, another point on the door. The home here, which is a huge advantage. And with Eddie and Ketia coming in which I thought looked really sharp in the last game and Eze performing really really well and the likes of Wharton feeding in balls to Eze now an extra player of Eddie and Ketia's sharpness ability great dribbling seemed to have worked quite nicely and he's already had a game to mingle with Crystal Palace it's time to take that to the next level and at home against a Manchester United side which hasn't been convincing yeah I think Crystal Palace have got a chance I think the fact that they haven't won yet it's time to have a win Manchester United well done on your 3-0 win but here going away against Crystal Palace I think they can finally get their first win I think it's about time they can't keep on going without a win I'm going 2-1 to Crystal Palace come the final whistle now we move to the 22nd of September it's at the Amex Stadium it's Brighton and Joe Albion versus Nottingham Forest and well Nottingham Forest well done to Alex Marino because what a player he is and same can be said for Aina the two fullbacks Marino and Aina really did well that was the main highlight the defense of ability. You know, Alex Moreno, what a signing. I said last video in my week three predictions on how good the transfer market went for Nottingham Forest. And it worked. Alex Moreno did his defending duties. He did really well. Aina did also really well as well. And Nottingham Forest are flying. They are flying. But coming against Brighton, I am so tempted to go for a 1-1 or maybe even another 0-0 for Brighton. But I just feel like Brighton, they've done two games without a win. I feel like that quality, the sheer amount of chances they had against Ipswich was crazy. But Ipswich did really well, as I've already said. So... They can't have another game without a win. It's as simple as that. Brighton are too good, especially at home. I'm going to say Nottingham Forest luck is finally going to end here. Sorry, Nottingham Forest, but going against Brighton, which have got loads of great young talents. I'm not going to name them all. I'm going to have to say Brighton win here. Only just about, and I'll go low scoring because of how well defended they did. But I'm going to say Brighton are going to win this one. 1-0 one come the final whistle. And it's the big game that I mentioned at the start of the video. It is at the Etihad Stadium. It's Manchester City versus Arsenal. Manchester City versus Arsenal. Huge game. Is it that if Arsenal win this, then boom, they win the entire league? No, because last year they managed to get four points against Manchester City. A win and a draw, and they still didn't win it. But against Man City here, Arsenal are going to have Declan Rice returning. Yes, both teams are playing in the Champions League. Worse off for Arsenal because they have to go away from home. That's one of the reasons why I don't think Arsenal's going to win it. And Martin Odegaard looks like he is injured coming into this game. So that's a huge loss. But Declan Rice coming in is a massive win there. And I feel like with Declan Rice, with the way they defended, which can I say, is like a premium defence. Michael Arteta knew exactly how to play against Spuds. And last time these teams played, it was actually nil-nil. I could see it being like that again, but Erling Haaland, he's got aimbot. He will score this game. Brentford did really well, was matching the intensity of Man City, which was crazy. So considering Brentford can, why can't Arsenal, which is a better side than Brentford? But Man City are just too good to say Arsenal are going to win it, and I feel like it evens out. But Arsenal, with the great defence, will be able to hold off, and I'm going for a 1-1 draw. Come the final whistle to the biggest game of the game week. Do not click off yet. As my goal of game week four is going to be between a few players. I was going to say Fabian Cher. When I first saw that going, I was like, has to be him. But it took a deflection, so I decided not. Then Harvey Barnes scored, and he scored the winner. So I was like, that has to be goal of the week. But then I saw Duran's goal. The fact that he was a super sub, and just the way it went in, it kind of swerved midway going into the goal. It has to be Duran. He is my goal of game week four. But how did I do in game week four? Well, here are all my results in depth if you really want to take a look of it and well as you can see i got zero exact results correct but i did get a few of the score lines correct so i did get seven points which seems to be a routine i keep on getting seven points other than week three but 
get your predictions down below. And if you want to find out where I predicted each team back in early August, then check out what's behind the camera. Toodle pip!